Welcome to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and this is the first episode to a brand new tutorial series focused on pixel art. I'm sure almost all of you are familiar with this awesome art style, used in breathtaking games like Owlboy, The Binding of Isaac, Hyperlight Drifter, just to name a few. So not only can pixel art be beautiful, but it's also a great way to make graphics for your game if you're not particularly handy with drawing and painting. Obviously, making epic looking pixel art worlds will take time and practice. However, contrary to other graphical styles, you don't need a drawing tablet to get started. So with that said, in this video I'll show you how to make pixel art using Photoshop. In the episodes following this one, we'll animate our pixel art characters, make sprite sheets, and then import them inside of Unity, ready to be implemented into whatever game you may be working on. So first things first, we need to make a new file with the right dimensions. So I'll head over to File, New, and choose Pixels for Scale. Now I can type in how many pixels wide and long I want my canvas to be. If you want to go for something very simple and blocky, reminiscent of old Zelda and Mario games, you can go ahead and make an 8 pixels wide and long canvas. Or, if you would like to add a tad more detail, try 16 times 16, 32 times 32, 64 times 64, or if you want to make a very detailed pixel art character and or environment, go for 128 times 128. But I wouldn't go any higher than this for pixel art, especially if you're just starting out. Note that the more pixels you have to deal with, the harder it will be to make your asset look good. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and make a 32 times 32 canvas. Awesome. Let's now draw some pixels. To do so, we don't use the brush tool, but the pencil tool, which you can find right here by right clicking on the brush icon with your mouse. You can then scale down the size of that pencil to 1 to be able to draw pixel by pixel. But obviously, you can scale this up if you want a larger nib. A cool setting you can use to help yourself out is the pixel grid, which you can find under View Show. This can be a big help for counting pixels and getting your characters symmetric, for example. Another extremely important tool is the eraser, which you can find right here. Its mode is usually set to brush, which, as you can see, won't erase very properly. So to get an effective pixel art eraser, simply set its mode to pencil. And now you can tweak its size and rub out cleanly any unwanted pixel. The last important tool to keep in mind is the rectangular marquee tool, which you can select right here. With this tool selected, you can left click and drag, and once you let go, hit Ctrl T on your keyboard. And now you can move your pixels around the canvas. This is especially great when animating, as we'll see in the next video. Now that you know about those crucial pixel art tools, let's make a character. So the first step is sketching. Create a new default Photoshop file and draw, not in pixel art, a rough character, monster, prop or environment that will fit your game world, or simply that you think will be fun to then pixel artify. You can of course also do this first step with a pen and some paper. Even if you are terrible at drawing, having a rough idea of what you'll be making will win you time in the long run and give you much better results. For example, this is a quick and very ugly sketch I made for my Beholder monster. Without reference, chances are high you'll spend a lot of time minutely drawing pixel by pixel a very weird and ugly looking creation. The reason being you didn't have a clear idea of the big picture. but and due to the rather precise nature of pixel art, we're spending loads of time fixating on the little details. While making your sketch, also ask yourself what this sprite will be used for. Is it a game character that will then need to be animated, or simply a static pixel art drawing? If this character will need to be animated, it's perhaps a good idea to keep it nice and simple, especially if you're a beginner. Alright, now that my sketch is complete, I'll head back into my 32x32 pixel art 
our file and left clicking on my sketch file, I'll drag it here so I can clearly see my handy reference drawing. With my pencil selected, I'll begin by making an outline of my character. I'll do so with a black colour for now, but of course nothing will stop me in the future from giving my design a different coloured outline. When making the outline of your character, you can either do so slowly but surely, pixel by a lovely pixel, or, and this is really recommended for larger sprites, create a rough outline fast and then clean things up later. One thing to avoid when making outlines in pixel art is a jaggy. In other words, little breaks in the line that make it look uneven and unappealing. It's basically when one piece of the line is smaller or larger than surrounding pieces. So for curved lines, make sure the decline or incline is consistent all the way through. So start for example with 6 pixels, then 3 and then 1. These values constantly decrease, contrary to 6 pixels, 3 pixels and then 4 pixels. Of course, don't spend too much time counting each and every pixel. Even if your outlines aren't perfect at first, with practice, all that was said a moment ago will come naturally to you. Once the outline of your character completes, it's time for colouring, shading and details. However, if you're planning on animating your character, you'll probably want to do so only with the outline and then colour out each individual frame, as we'll see in detail in the next video. The reason being, it's a whole lot simpler to tweak the movement and proportions of an outline than doing so with a character that has been coloured, shaded and lit. Nothing can be more frustrating than rubbing out all of that hard work because your animation doesn't feel right. But even if you're planning on animating your character, stick around since we're going to take a look at some cool techniques to bring to life your character with color color and shadows that you'll use anyway further down the pipeline. So let's block out the character's main colors. You can do so nice and fast with the paint bucket tool. Just make sure that this anti-alias box is unchecked, or you'll get some unwanted pixels bleeding out from your outline. Play around with various color combinations, and once you're satisfied, let's move on to shadows. If you've watched my video on painting 2D game characters and drawing cartoony style ones, you'll know the drill. Pick a light source which I usually place somewhere above my character and paint out your shadows in the opposite direction of that light source. Note that you can actually paint these on a separate layer if you're worried you'll ruin what's already been drawn out. Your shadows should be a darker shade of your initial colour, so what I do is I grab my eyedropper tool, accessible right here, which will allow me to select some colour on my canvas. Once my colour selected, I'll head over to the colour panel and choose a darker shade of that colour, using it to paint my shadows. If you want softer, more detailed shadows, you can repeat this process, choosing a slightly less dark colour and using that to give shadows a nice gradient effect. Be careful not to do too much of this though, or you run the risk of getting a very blurry looking sprite, which can go against the crisp awesomeness of pixel art. Let's now add some lighter patches to our design. Again, I'll grab my eyedropper tool, select my main colour and this time in my colour panel, choose a lighter shade of that colour, using it to highlight parts of my character directly hit by the light source. You can of course also soften these highlights if you so choose. Note that for shadows and highlights, you could use a technique called dithering, which basically consists in painting only one out of two pictures pixels for some cool retro effects. Of course, this all depends on what style you want for your game. Now comes the time for details. If you've been making a small pixel art game character on an 8x8 or 16x16 pixel sized canvas for example, you won't have much room to add anything. If you've been working on something larger, add little white specular dots, wrinkles and or even tweak the colour of your outline. Though a black outline like this looks cool and makes the character pop out, it doesn't feel very realistic. If realism is what you want or simply don't like black outlines, you can go ahead and change the line's colour 
to better match your other colors. For example, here, the top of my creature's head is a light red, so I'll select that with my eyedropper tool and grab something slightly darker for my outline, and I'll continue doing this for the rest of the outline. Excellent. We've just completed the first part of the process, making the static pixel art drawing. Again, if you aren't impressed by what you've come up with, that's totally fine. Just keep creating and you'll eventually become a master at the craft. If you want a cool community to share your creations with, come and join the Blackthorn Prod Discord server. You can also join the Pixel Daily community and have fun creating on a daily basis pixel art and animation which you can then share with and get loads of feedback from. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and keep in mind that the next episode on animating your pixel art game characters with Photoshop will come out very soon. If you want to be absolutely awesome, you can go ahead and support me and my channel via Patreon, like these top supporters. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would also be so appreciated. With that said, stay tuned. <laughs>